Okay, we're live here. Um, to start off, we have been rebuilding a Dodge Hemi. And uh, the pistons are a little bit hard to get apart because of the shape on the sides where the uh, pistons go through. There's yeah, nothing real flat. There's nothing real flat. To locate against when you're pressing things out and so we were putting new pistons in anyway so we ended up we took and knew that these were going to be trash and we ground the flat spot on one side so that yeah, let me hold it we had a deep well socket that when we were pulling through we had a, a bushing on the end of a grade 5 bolt, and the grade 5 bolt goes through the bottom end as we're looking at, at the uh, piston, in the, and then a nut, a grade 5 nut with washers goes up on top. Uh, preferably all that stuff if it's hardened you're gonna have a, an easier time of it because if you're u using soft washers or anything from all the torque it just chews them up and binds up and things so uh, the best thing to do is get something that's hardened when you're doing that and that was our uh, first hurdle first hurdle and and we finally got the rods off without taking them to a machine shop and just by, just by using, using some brute force and turning on the bolts yep. and some people in videos use uh, uh power assist to take yeah. them out and i we think we found that power assist don't help it, it uh, just chews things up yeah. because it builds up heat it builds up heat and it'll it'll twist the threads so, right off of the bolt here yeah so you gotta watch out for that so uh, you gotta be careful make sure your threads are all lubricated well and things like that and the surfaces that you know are going to be slipping yeah. when you're trying to uh, torque up the screw to pull the pin through Okay, now the next hurdle is assembling. When you're assembling them, yeah. Uh, when you want to put new, the new pistons together with the old rod, you have another hurdle. Okay. Some some people have uh, special fixtures that hold the piston. We made our own. Can you show this here. We've got a low yep. or not. This is a a cross cut sled I made. Yep. For, for cutting on for the cutting off. boards and stuff. But it worked great. For and us. we thought, well, we need to make something. And we came out here, and my son says, "What do you mean, make something? Use this." Oh, yeah. So, this has all the stuff on it. It's got T tracks and things, and and locators. And so, what we did was we took the piston. Uh, and we put it up against here and had the edges trap it. Yep. And then you lock this down and that holds it in place. Now, if you look before we put this in here, there's, there's a, a screw. screw there. That's where that screw when you push the pin in, it, it, the pin. it comes out, helps to center yep. it when you're driving it through. Okay. So, this is obviously this is the old piston. We don't have our, uh, arm because still, that's in in the block that's in, now. that's in the new block but since we had an issue uh what we do is we, you, you lock these in figured we'd explain yep and uh for most instructions people heat this up. is marty over here my yep. son marty peck and i'm charles yeah for most of the instructions that people do they uh they chill these pins right here in in the freezer in the freezer Okay, that shrinks them down as small as they're going to get, you know, for depending on how cold you can get them, but uh, that shrinks them down. And your connecting rod, you take map gas, which is, eh, they say it's about 
five to eight hundred uh, degrees hotter than propane. And we can't show that here because yeah. we already did it. We already did it on the new ones, and occasionally you run into an error where you're trying to slide the pin in. It's and supposed to push right in with this your fingers. Slides right in with your fingers. And it's supposed to go through right the rod nice once the rod's good and hot. Through the connecting rod right here, and this will butt up against that that screw that we had, and that would set your depth to center the rod and the pin all in one. Well, sometimes if you're slow at doing it and you don't get it into it this locks seat, part way, it locks right in here, and you'll get you get people that have them locked right here, and you got to take them to the to the uh, machine shop and have them repressed back out or but we have an answer for that yep we we created an answer and on your new pistons what we did we took a block of wood of wood just a scrap dense. block it was laying right here yep staring you see at how us it's compressed the block right just compressed to the shape we of the piston we kind of routed this out so that when this was against here that the pin would actually sit once it hit here to where this would set. When this was yeah, in like form this. Form fits right to it. Form fits right to it, yep. And then you could take this rod that we used to draw it out with, put it back through here. What you can do with wood. Yeah, come through here. Of course, you gotta get, you know, a very set of, you know, washers and whatnot, but and we had you questions whether the wood was going to work, whether it would be strong yeah. enough and hold together, but it compressed right and tight and it never your cracked. Your connecting rod would have been in here, stuck, you know. So what we do Part is we way put in the that connecting center. rod into a vise like this, and you hold this setup right here. And then you can just turn against this with a nut on here, and this will drive this pin the rest of the way, even if... It's a brand new seated pin. It drove it. You know, it, it, it does put a lot of force on things. You, you can see, see the, the force the lines. The splits here and the, the compression it did on the wood, but... Yeah, that was flat there where the yeah, this was washers flat, were. But the and you have pistons, to keep changing. The new piston, because of the, the seat here, this, the way that this angles in, there's no way to put something in and draw against it. Because of the compression on that, when he started... Yep. He could he could crank things in yep. just to a certain point and it's it, it would jam up and start compressing. Yeah. And because of you only have so much length on the right the on thread. This. So what you have to do is this bushing you have to keep changing slightly smaller than the than their, your pin is. That'll go right through that hole. So that'll draw right through that hole and push this in. And, and using uh, what was it, a nine sixteenth or five eighths? Five eighths socket. Five eighths socket. Yep. That'll go right through with the bolt. Of course, these are the old pistons. They're pretty ugly, beat up. You know, what we had is we had one that had busted off the lip of these. Mm -hmm. And we had to replace the whole Which is car. what what you need that to go through when you're taking it apart. But yep. when you're putting it together, no, you don't. Yep. Because it's pushing the pin in uh, so that you can get your pin. alignment. See, now in the new ones, these pins, they spin all around. You see how this is locked up? It's got, it? it's got uh, tarnishes, or varnishes, and, I mean... Okay pop it up out of there and but the but new pins and new new pins slip pistons right. you can push them right down and through they, they spin really easy because it's it. supposed to lock on the rod not the yep you see here is if you look at the coloration here on this pin you notice the center is nice and shiny and the outsides are kind of browned out bronzed out this is actually oil buildup that seats between here and here this here has no oil buildup. This is because it's the, a tight press fit. That's there. where the press fit comes in. There's no oil between it, so it doesn't turn brown with heat and all that. That tells you that you know this was locked in. Now, when you heat the rod up, that that pin's going into. Yeah. You got to be careful. Yep. Uh, we used map gas. Yep. And he heated it up till it was blue all the way around in, you do in not the want hole. Don't heat it up till it's red. Don't heat it if up. You go red, you might as well throw your connecting rod away. It's it's basically garbage. 
and then with this in position and all locked in yeah. the one guy says well it's getting almost ready that this rod's ready so you better get a pin in place so I I would pull one out of the ice and I would put it in until it was almost sticking out and in the new one with it's, all new it's pins so much easier. he'd get it about like this if you look at it like that and then when the rod, the rod goes in, in you just take and push it in and yeah. and these you can't do that so well because of the buildup yeah it'd have to all be polished off to make them slip in and out good yep. and pardon my shaking here because when i'm trying to do something with one hand i'm i can't hold this phone steady enough <laughs> um yeah. but we had a few that when we were Pushing that in, they didn't get all the way in and it seized up. Yep. So that's where this wood block idea came in. Yeah. And also, if you it, don't set them right, if we, you happen to have them out set, you know, offset one way or the other. Yeah, we had two this, that you could do that. Well, we were just a hair these, bit off center. You want to get these centered as, as good as you, you can. can. Because what happens is. When your piston's your slapping up and down, if it's got more weight on one side than the other because this is over, your piston will kind of start rocking, okay? You don't want that. You want it straight up and down. You want these straight. You've got to make sure that the connecting rod is centered in there. So, you know, if you, if you ain't got the money to spend it going to a machine shop, there's an answer. There's an answer for when you get in trouble. When you get in trouble. <laughs> uh, and if you think it through or you get a little help with videos and things, there's a lot of people that have run into this. And these dodges are really a problem because of the sides. There's nothing square to really. Yeah, if you look, uh, nothing it's, square on It's there. rounded, so they must have a. A special tool that fits in there and uh, well, on top of that it's when saying, they're putting them together our special tool is our wood block, yep. <laughs> this is our wood block. It, it, it saved us having to go to a machine shop and yeah after they locked up on us I haven't couple. looked at it paying somebody to do them but somebody told me that I looked at you know they were between 10 and 20 dollars a, a, a piston so if you've got to get all eight pressed, you know, you're looking 80 to, if it's 20, 160 bucks, you know. I mean, this here was free, you know. <laughs> Three block of wood. It was laying wood. right here from a cutoff piece. These these bolts and bushings. With my crosscut sled. About 10 or 12 bucks worth of bolts, bushings, and washers. And, you know, basically the rest of this it was crosscut sled has really worked out a lot for yeah, this, a lot he, he of things already, here so it works out uh, a here's a cabinet that I built for a, a 6g3 uh, fender amp design and I did the dovetailing and everything and I cut the pieces on here and did all the that work and so it was it was something he already had built so two-fold thing that we used it on and we never dreamed about doing this with the uh, assembling the pistons yep. and everything and it worked yep. out great because yep. all the clamping and everything was right here all the scrap wood blocks were here for making the location to, to trap this doesn't have to be super solid in here either i mean it helps you just certainly. want it fixed you want it so it's not moving you don't around. have to clamp so that it's got a whole lot of pressure you yeah. just want it fixed so that when you're sliding stuff it's not going to move right. you don't you. want this to move or twist while you're trying to push that in because that, that there, that's when it cocks and it and cocks locks and up hit an edge in here on the inside of this after it goes through the connecting rod and that'll stop you and that stop right there that's just all you a, need. Just a fraction because of a second. And a, this hits here. The heat the, transfer yeah. locks it right up. Once these are in the wrong are position, cold, unfortunately. When these are cold and your connecting rod's hot, 
when they meet, you've got two seconds from the time that this touches your connecting rod to get it through and in place. And if you don't, it locks where it is. I mean, if you only got it through part way, it'd lock right here on your connecting rod and mm -hmm. this section instead of back here. You don't really want that. And we had that happen on two of ours. Now, you you want to make sure and we that at the point that, that the pin starts in, you know, it, where you want it to start in, that you see that it's entering the hole at that point before you try jamming it in. Make sure it's lined up. Yep. You have... You, you have, have the time. time. You can trust this. You thing. don't have you to know, worry about uh, that rod cooling down that fast. Not until all that stuff slid together. Yep. So, if you get it started, keep going. Don't yep. stop until it butts against your stop until screw. Until it butts against your stop screw, yep. So. Well, Marty, you think we covered everything? I think we covered everything. I hope that All helps right. them. I mean, I know coming up with this idea with this block of wood, it certainly saved me some it's money. A, so. a redneck yeah. contraption we did here, and, yep. but it works. It works. And we didn't have to go to a machine shop to uh, yep. get us out of trouble. Well, like I said, I hope it helps somebody else, and i'm sure he's going to be posting it so if there's comments i'm sure he'll respond to it and i'm sure he'd be well you know willing to answer them so all right well i guess we're going to close this video out then and thanks for listening